Today, Pink Dome will roll out another weekly recap. I know you're super excited about that and that's why you're here. There's a ton of national news happening and that's turned a lot of attention away from local issues, but those issues still stand and deserve our attention. So let's hit the top points. Imelda. The flooding from Imelda caused a quick panic in the coastal areas of Southeast Texas with Governor Abbott declaring a state of emergency in the counties of Brazoria, Chambers, Galveston, Hardin, Harris, Jasper, Jefferson, Liberty, Matagorda, Montgomery, Newton, Orange, and San Jacinto. Though the rainfall comparison to Harvey was less in total, some areas were hit much harder than the storm two years ago. The small town of Winnie, Texas completely flooded and Beaumont, Texas was hit really hard. So far there have been five fatalities due to the storm. Some groups are suing to have the right to deny employees paid sick leave. Yeah, that's a thing. Three cities in Texas, Austin, Dallas, and San Antonio have passed ordinances to require employers to provide levels of paid sick leave, or they tried to. Dallas is the only one that went into effect despite the lawsuits. They didn't file them in time in that area to stop the new policy. Now, however, the lawsuit is throwing some legal trouble in the situation. Lots of Texans are holding their breath, hoping they'll be able to take time off to go to the doctor. You know, important stuff like that. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick has been hit by some of his party and the National Rifle Association for comments supporting expanding background checks for stranger to stranger sales. Patrick said, look, I'm a solid NRA guy, but not expanding the background check to eliminate the stranger to stranger sale makes no sense to me and most folks. He's actually right. According to the NBC News and Wall Street Journal poll, 89% of Americans favor expanding background checks for gun sales. 76% support red flag laws and 75% favor a voluntary gun buyback program. Annie's List recently endorsed two women running for the House of Representatives. Elise Markowitz of HD28 and Lorraine Birabil HD100 are the two that get to add that endorsement to their campaign websites. In total different spaces, Markowitz is the only Democrat to run for her district and Birabil is one of many Democrats, Annie's List is no small feat. The organization has been working to elect progressive women in Texas for 15 years. Training, support, and connections could be in the cards for these candidates running. Food pantry take on a different atmosphere. The Catholic Charities of San Antonio and other charities around Texas have begun opening client-centric food pantries. These are food pantries where members of the community in need are able to pick their own assistance items, much like going to a regular grocery store, instead of stopping by and taking what they can get. They provide autonomy and independence, bringing a level of dignity to the needs of others. These systems are growing in popularity and have already taken off around the state. Full day pre-K, does Texas have what it takes? Under HB3, Texas school districts are required to offer full day pre-K free of charge to eligible students. The eligible students for free full day pre-K would fall into these categories. Four years old before September 1st, economically disadvantaged, ESL, homeless, military, or foster care. Okay, that's great, right? Pre-K has been linked to success for students. However, this new gift has run into issues for school districts. There's a lack of infrastructure in school districts to support more students, like teachers and physical space, and requires the creation of new curriculum. ISDs are attempting a partnership with the federally funded Head Start programs, even though HB3 has different eligibility requirements in Head Start. Basically, the facilitation of this legislation is really difficult and needs to have been worked out, like yesterday. There are various issues in school districts. Austin ISD is slated to close 12 schools in the next five years. The schools are located in mostly low-income areas and those students would be reorganized and dispersed in order to reinvent the school district. That's a quote from the superintendent. The Houston ISD board takeover rests on the grade TEA gave to Wheatley High School. It was the seventh F the school has received in just as many years. Texas Education Commissioner Mike Morath told HISD board that if the F is not successfully appealed, the district must either choose to close the historically black high school or lose the HISD's elected board. Yikes. Let's end on that casual note. That's it for this week. As always, post any video concept ideas in the comments and be on the lookout for new information at reformaustin.org.